Hey guys, welcome back to the next devlog. Today we are jumping into Unreal Engine 4.2. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. I'm studying computer science and linguistics at NYU with a minor in game design, and this is the Seashell Devlog. Last week was a pretty rough week just because of how intense my last intro to game design week was, and I built some very basic block models and did like two sketches, which is pretty inexcusable, but this week we're jumping into Unreal. Now, as I've said a few times, one of the main reasons for these devlogs is to take my experience and share them with you guys, because that's how I've learned so much of what I know and how I do things. I've seen other people do things, and I tried them, and it either works or doesn't. One thing that I've always been up in the air about is this juxtaposition between following a course and actually just sitting down and doing something. I could just sit down and work on Seashell in Unreal Engine. Or, you know, I could sit through and watch the entire course. Right now, I'm sort of trying to do a blend of both. I want to jump into Unreal Engine as soon as I can, but not too soon because I want to know what I'm doing and make sure that I do things in an optimal way. So what this course consists of, as any good course does, is by gamedev.tv. You can find them on Udemy or their main site. I got this in the Humble Model a while ago. I got a Blender course on Udemy by them ages ago, which is where I first heard of them. Anyway, I'm gonna be using their course throughout Seashell to get myself used to Unreal Engine. You know, if you need to how to make a game in Unreal, watch YouTube videos, find what you need, I think that's a great way to learn and learn fast. But also, I wanna learn formally in this way. So, a lot of this video is gonna be talking about what I'm learning through the courses themselves and the application. The motto for this week is something I recently saw in a Captain Sinbad video, and that is, what's the next step? Oh man, I gotta do some Unreal Engine course today. Okay, what's the next step though? What's the most basic component of that that you have to do? And recently, that's been really helpful in terms of just getting me to do things. What's the next step? Okay, stop watching this video. Put pause on Great Pretender. Okay, what's the next step? Now open gamedev.tv, look at the files. Okay, what's the next step? Go down to building escape. What's the next step? Click the video and watch it. And it seems a lot easier to do at that point. And I'm gonna be sticking by this for my upcoming semester, so I wanted to throw those words of wisdom out to you guys. But yeah, I ended up recording because, you know, devlog, gotta do it. But yeah, we'll go through pointer primer and stuff, and I will talk to you about what I learned when I get to quiz nine. Alrighty, first few lessons are already done. Now, now, I do want to talk about something real quick while this is initializing. One thing with code that people are often, I don't want, not like consciously scared of, but don't want to dive into and you know, oh man, Unreal Engine coding is so hard or oh, this is so difficult is because coding isn't the tough part of coding. It's learning the libraries you're coding within. When I first started making Minecraft plugins, it was really difficult because I didn't know how the Spigot API works. Now I know it like the back of my hand. I have no idea how Unreal works. From the few videos I just watched, compared to Unity, it is rather different in terms of some of its basic setup. You know, instead of scripts being on objects, you have components on actors. And it's just very nice to have the videos kind of guide you through that, even though I watch them on 2x speed. There are so many classes in Unreal, it's kind of nuts. It's kind of cool though. So I guess we have to go here and add a... So now we go to basics, go bring in an empty actor, which is an object. And I know you can't see this very well, but it's happening, I promise. And then we have to add a component, new C++ component, actor component, world pause is what they called it in the lecture, generates the code. Okay, so here's the thing I mainly wanted to talk about in this little bit here. We have a, a world pause, the actor.h, which is the header file, and then the world pause.cpp, which is just the main file for the component. It's very different in Unity as far as I'm aware. I don't know much about Unity, but I know like the basics. The first main lesson in this Unreal course that I'm watching went over the main file and the header file for the different components and how they interact. And so looking at this, I am not totally bewildered. If I opened Unreal, I could probably figure out add component, new C++ plus component, and then I would get here and be like, another great way to learn is just look at the docs and give things a shot. But again, I'm just going through this because I want it to be formal. It's also an excuse to go slow. I did these basic things and I that's all I'm going to do for right now. I'm just taking it small. That, that's just the next step. Anyway, whatever does happen, see you then. All right, we finished up quiz 10, which was learning how to log to the output. Right now, I'm going to do the next four lessons, which are importing custom meshes, using BSP for basic building blocks. Then there's a BSP challenge, which I assume is going to take me 20 minutes itself. And then basic lighting, and then quiz 11. I plotted out the next stuff, so I'm going to hopefully finish I plotted out the next few things on my wonderful to do list, so I will hopefully be done by Friday. I have my first day of classes on Thursday, so I'm gonna maybe take a chill, but go hard in the morning. So far, nothing code wise has been new. Pointers are the same as pointers have always been. And then we have a clip from Zaf, a really good friend of mine working on a note taking app, so make sure to stick around for that. Okay, so I just added some textures in and I wanted to mention a few things before I moved on to the rest of this. 
One is that these online courses, something I realized is that I'm drawn to them because I'm looking for a deeper understanding of Unreal Engine. And they go through things in great detail. If I go look at a course on how to do something, they're gonna show me how to do it, but they're not gonna show me the underlying structure more often than not. That's what you get with a full course. They have the full rights to say, okay, so far we know how to do this, so let's do it that way. But hey, see how long this took? See how unoptimized it is? Well, let's do this other thing. Let me show you how to do it, and then you do it yourself. So I spent about five to 10 minutes on the texture challenge after Unreal crashed a few times, and now I'm moving on. Now I'm getting into the nitty gritty of, you know, these things taking longer, but I, I think it's, it's really worth it. I, I know how to import the Blender model for Seashell now. So something I was trying to articulate here was that there's this weird misconception or so I believe amongst people who believe that people who know how to code know how to code everywhere. But what I was showing here was that when you go into VS Code when in Unreal, you can use autocomplete, also called IntelliSense, to tell yourself what's coming next. So if you go object dot, you can see object dot name, object dot components or stuff like that. For example, in Minecraft, you all you need to know is how one event works because for the rest of the time you can just do event dot or look at the spigot docs or bucket docs and just see everything that's available for that event. And it was the same principle in Unreal. And it's the same principle everywhere. Just because I know how to use Unreal doesn't mean I know everything about Unreal. The reason I'm watching the course is because I'm learning Unreal's interface and how things interact with each other. But when it comes to the code, the challenges have been pretty much a breeze. And that's simply because I know how to navigate the coding environment. I'm not trying to learn everything about Unreal, but after this building escape thing is done, the idea is that I'll be on much better footing when I jump into my own projects in Unreal, fighting the unknown. So if you're hesitant to jump into a new thing with code or just code in general, just know that everybody who codes is always, always looking at the docs using IntelliSense, using Stack Overflow. Hopefully that makes sense, but it's all about looking at the docs and knowing how to implement these things. None of this was in the lecture except for get owner get actor rotation. So yeah. Anyway, let's take a break from Unreal and look at Zaf, who's working on a note-taking app called Relanota. I'm sure he's done this same sort of thing in UWP, which I believe is the framework that he's using or the .NET framework. Then after that, I'll recap what I finished in Unreal, since I think we're done with time lapses and this video is getting kind of lengthy now. Anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoy Zaf's segment on Relanota. He edited the video in PowerPoint, and I don't understand how one has the patience for that. But yeah, hope you enjoy. See you in a few minutes. Hello, my name is Saf, and I'm a student at Olpo University in Denmark studying software engineering. Right, now that's out of the way. Hi, I'm Saf. I am the developer of Relnota, which you might see on Mark's channel right about here. So what is Relnota and how is it made? Relnota is a relational note-taking application written in the Universal Windows Platform Framework for c -sharp. Now, if you don't understand what I just said, or it just sounds like gibberish, I totally understand. In December 2020, Mark introduced me to Todoist, which is where I'm primarily down everything I need to get done for Relnota. And as such, the list of things I need to complete can get very, very long. That does not take into account that sometimes I just happen to find a bug, which I do not note in to do is but just fix right away which is why some tasks sometimes get pushed back even further this is especially true when i stumble upon one of the many features in wp which i would personally consider to be a bug now besides using to do is for tracking tasks i also keep the change log inside rel noter itself this is because rel noter uses markdown to format its notes which allows me to write prettier change logs for my github page now should you want to download Relnota, this can be done through the Microsoft Store. However, I should note that the version of Relnota I've showcased in this video is not the one on the store currently. The one I'm using currently has a bunch of bugs, which I want to fix before shipping it to the store. I'm sure I can convince Mark to put a link to the store page down in the description.
Hey guys, it is currently 6.13 p.m. I just got back from a run, so I'm coughing. I still have a bunch of lectures to go in the course and it's 6.15 p.m. So tonight's devlog is clearly late. I'm gonna go finish those up. But all in all, I think my goal, just thinking ahead because it's the start of the semester for next week is gonna be finishing Tune Tanks because it looks really cool and I think it'll be really fun. It also seems shorter. Learning Unreal's engine's been fun. I don't know if I wanna use it in the future. I'm starting to second guess my wanting to use it, but it's all learning this week. And then I wanna get into some art lectures later tonight, but I'll see you in like five seconds. Although for me, it'll probably be like two hours at this point, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been a weird day. Anyway, on to the conclusion. All right, uh, so I didn't finish the course. Okay, so I didn't finish the last few lectures, but I'm super tired and this deadline needs to get out. So I kind of bombed this week again, sort of. I learned a lot for Unreal though. I'm pretty happy with just like the general gist. I have it set to finish tomorrow morning and then this upcoming week, so I'll throw my calendar up now, is the first time I'm gonna be testing my template of the week for my classes and all that. So we will see how that goes. We're gonna skip the community section just for today, but make sure to drop your comments on what you're working on down below because next week I will be announcing the official invite link to our Discord. It's been lively, oddly enough lately, so I'm really excited to announce it because everything's pretty much in place. We're just kind of finalizing a name, sort of. So yeah, goals for next week. I really wanna get into drawing and I know I'm, I'm, you're gonna see me keep saying that, but I really need to get drawing on concept art and make concept art. A lot of that stuff I talked about last week has been really on my mind. I believe that I can finish the Toon Tanks lesson, assuming that I stick to the schedule that I have myself on right now. And yeah, that'll be it for next week. So finishing that part of the Unreal course and concept art because I need the visual direction, if not just the ability to work on art consistently. It is my first week of the semester though, so we'll see how it goes. But without further ado, thanks yet again for watching. Have a good evening or morning. I see you. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.